Hey, everybody. Welcome to the first edition of the Time Blueprint. It's great to have you with us. I'm Walter Storholt alongside Frank Oliver of Oliver Asset Management. It's a new podcast. And Frank, I can't wait to dive into all the different topics that we're going to get into here on the show. I'm excited as well. Thank you for hosting this for us, Walter. Well, what we're going to do in episode number one today is just kind of go through a little bit of a getting to know you episode. So we want to know a little bit about the business, about you personally, and then some goals for the podcast that we can share with listeners and viewers of the show as well. So very good. Should be a fun episode and uh, we'll even have a little fun along the way too. So sounds perfect. Welcome to the Time Blueprint with Frank Oliver of Oliver Asset Management. Here, we break down taxes, income, money, and estate planning, giving you the tools to make informed financial decisions and aim for better retirement outcomes. Your host is financial advisor, Frank Oliver, the president and founder of Oliver Asset Management. He's the author of Your Time Is Now, sharing the essentials you need to know to craft a comprehensive and customized retirement plan. Dive in with us as we offer clear strategies and straightforward advice all designed to empower you in your financial journey. Welcome to the Time Blueprint. All right, so on episode one of the Time Blueprint, we're going to get into talking a little bit about why the name Time. I'm sure that's going to come up as we're talking about the business a little bit, and then we'll get to know you a little bit too here, Frank. But let's talk about the business first, and let's just begin there. So uh, my first kind of question for you is you're a financial advisor. Correct. Um, Give us a little bit of background on all of our asset management. How long have you guys been in business and here in the Longmont, Northern Colorado community. Just give us the 411. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I get that question quite a bit, Walter, how long I've been in business. So I'm a native of Colorado. So uh, my dad worked for a public service company back when I was growing up as a kid. So we moved from Denver to Greeley. Then I moved to Lafayette to Longmont to birth it. So 50 miles one way or another, you could throw a football. It's been like a spiral. You've just been spiraling to the right spot. Absolutely right. So I'm not going anywhere. I'm very, very local, very native, love Colorado. We live at the foothills, uh, in the foothills, just out at the bottom of Carter Lake. If anybody knows where that is, that's from Colorado. Absolutely. Um, So we've been in business about 20 years. Um, Started off primarily in the insurance agency, believe it or not, knocking on doors out in the farming country. Uh, Worked with farmers and ranchers in eastern Colorado. How about that? Yeah, it was awesome. And then... And really wanted to get into financial planning and knew a lot about the industry, just uh, the direction, you know, I started off a little bit different direction and then migrated into the financial planning segment. And I got licensed to become a financial planner in 2001. In 2001. Yep. Nice. I remember the, well, everybody, well, you would think, right? Because it's been 22 years now. Well, something big happened right something around that really time Something really big frame. happened in 2001. Yeah. So I basically started my career during the unfortunate terrorist attacks, mm-hmm. which was the worst financial crisis we've ever seen. And on the heels of dot-com bubble, right? Exactly. Right on the heels of the dot-com bubble. So that was, that was a very challenging time, but probably the best time for me to open my doors because it really opened my eyes to what people need during all different times of economic climates. Because mm-hmm. things aren't always good like we like you know, like we would hope for them to be. Sure. So I got started at probably a time in everybody's life where they needed really taken care of and they needed some financial products that would mitigate against risk and really just make them feel good with what was going on. So that was kind of how I got my start. So, and that was a little over 20 years ago. Very neat. Yeah. So how yeah. have things evolved for you and the business over that period of time? Yeah. So, you know, when you start off, you you have a handful of clients and we were, you know, basically like every other financial advisor meeting people um, in their kitchen tables, which was a lot of fun just driving around at night. Yeah. And, you know, they'd make you chicken soup and you'd sit there with Aunt Betty and, you know, just like leave it to Beaver and, you know, meet at their house. I love and that. that was great. It's it was great. super, super fun. But it becomes inefficient after a while. So as you start to grow, you know, you have to just create some efficiencies to make the business better. So uh, we got our first office about 15 years ago. Then we moved to Main Street here in Longmont. We were there for seven years and we just kept growing so rapidly, Walter, that we finally had to buy our own building. So this building is about 5,500 square feet. Uh, we bought this building to service our clients. So we had a much nicer environment for our clients. We have much better parking. It's got a full lower level so we can hold our own workshops here. So now we do our own educational events here. Clients don't have to drive to restaurants. Works out very, very well. People really like it. That's cool. Uh, for those of you who will be video viewers of the show, uh, at some point we'll have to shoot some video of the conference room totally. and uh, yeah. show people what that looks yeah. like. It's so cool that you can do uh, also workshops down in the basement as well. That's where the podcast is happening today, in fact, folks. So we've got a renovated room down here. We've got a freshly painted wall and all the good stuff going on. So working good. This is fun. All right. 
right. So tell us a little bit about what, let's get to the heart of being an advisor sure. as your business, but also your role changed from the just more the insurance focused sure. days to now you do a lot more comprehensive planning. For quite a while we have. Yeah. Absolutely. Diving into people's financial lives, helping them prepare for retirement and their futures. So your role as a financial advisor, I think anybody who's looking for one may discover that that definition of financial advisor is very broad. A lot of people can call themselves sure. a financial advisor. So detail us in your mind, what is a true financial advisor all about and what should they be servicing for folks? Yeah. And I think the fiduciary explanation really fits that that question or answers that question very well. And I get asked all the time if I'm mm. a fiduciary, which basically means you're putting the client's needs first. Um, and I think as an advisor, that's what we've always tried to do is put the client's needs first. Um, so not only do we look at you know uh, securities products in the market, um, we also look at, at insurance and long-term care insurance and, and annuities and just any kind of planning tool that they need. And that's really where I came up with, with time, you know, because I think a lot of financial advisors, and when you think of a financial advisor, if you go back 30 or 40 years ago, you thought of a stockbroker, Yeah, you know, uh, and there was a saying that we used to joke around about, uh, what, uh, why do they call him a broker? Because they make your broker, you know, <laughs> and I, that's definitely not true. But yeah. you know, the stockbrokers got kind of a kind of a, a different reputation back in the day, and so we really look at the full comprehensive approach. And I get asked this question all the time, and and I always just refer back to time. So we look at taxes, income, money, and estate planning. And if you take care of all of those needs, that'll take care of your taxes, your Roth conversions, your 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 asset management. What happens if we pass away and the funds need to transfer to the family? Is that set mm -hmm. up properly? So we look at the full picture. That's wonderful. And we are going to spend our first, uh, the next four episodes of the podcast, breaking down each of those elements. So yep. we're going to talk about taxes on episode number two. Then we're going to get into talking about income. Then we'll talk about that money component and right. then estate planning, uh, the final piece of the first couple of episodes of the show here. Sure. So tune into those and you'll get to learn a little bit more about that planning approach in more specific specifics. What do you like the most about your role as a financial advisor and, and coaching people into retirement? Yeah, that's an awesome question. So um, it probably took five or 10 years before I realized how much I enjoyed this. It's watching people retire and taking the biggest step of their life. Nice. So we always say there's two or three really big events in your life, marriage, your first child, and retirement. Yeah. And those are probably the three big ones right there. Don't worry about second and third child. <laughs> right. Are we going to offend some third siblings? <laughs> I, I know. Okay. Right. Yeah. Good point. The second well, and third are never see, as know, special know, right? as that first well, one. You can tell that's coming from somebody that doesn't have children, right? Is, and, uh, and I'm an only child, so you, you oh, didn't offend me at all. I hit the nail on the head with you. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yeah. But no, it, it's awesome. It's, it's a lot of fun guiding people through retirement. Um, so, you know, during your working years, hopefully you save more than you spend, you contribute to the 401k, mm. you pay off your debt, but then one day you wake up and you know, you got six months or 12 months or 18 months before you're done, you're going to retire. And it's a big, big step. You've worked your entire life. And all of a sudden you wake up one day and you no longer are going to work ever again yeah. for the rest of your life. And that's a really hard obstacle for people to navigate sometimes. Um, did I save enough? Should I work another year? Yeah. Um, you know, when do I like social security? I mean, the spouses sometimes are, you know, very challenged with this decision because, because the husband typically we're older, right? Yeah. So we retire first and, and the female spouse is, is unsure how that's going to work. Um, so, but anyway, uh, that's, that's the most enjoyable part of my career is, is helping through that transition Yeah. and watching them come back 90 days later, six months later with this huge smile on their face super relaxed knowing that they made the best decision. That's really cool. Yeah, I mean, there's cool. this financial component, obviously, to what you do, but there's yeah. also this huge emotional side to oh it God. all. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And that that that's very gratifying in my industry. So. Yeah. To be able to work in both of those arenas, right? Yeah. You get to work with the numbers, but also with the people. And yeah. that helps. To coach them through the, one of the biggest steps of their life. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's been neat. My parents are retiring this year okay. and dad has taken the, um, I'm going to do it a little bit at a time. So yeah. he, he's kind of gone part time now, nice. already had his retirement party, mm -hmm. uh, the company through for him, but he's still working for the company for mm -hmm. a couple more months. Mom's going to do more of the hard pull on sure. the trigger. And it's interesting to see that emotional difference between the two. Right. Uh, so it's just yeah. neat that you mentioned that because yeah, yeah I've, I've been seeing it play out in mm -hmm. real time. Well, we'll talk all about the business and when sure. we get into the financial education aspects in future episodes. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit more about you, Frank. Okay. Uh, so you mentioned born and raised, of course, yeah. here in Colorado, uh, living in Bertha, working in Longmont. Right. Uh, what do you love so much about this area? What's kept you here your whole life? 
I mean, the mountains for sure. You know, the Four Seasons. Uh, I may be one of the last Coloradoans that still likes snow. I yeah. love snow. I love to snow ski. I'm a new Coloradan, there but I go. love it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm going to get you into it. Snow skiing, snowshoeing. Um, I, I love to snowmobile. Um, I really love the Four Seasons. Uh, nice. It's just I embrace it. Um, I enjoy the mountains. The mountains are just to me just very picturesque. You know, so the Four Seasons, yeah. and I and I like the snow. So oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Well, that'll probably be the easiest question you answer on the podcast, Frank. Why right. do you like living in northern Colorado? Colorado. Right. So that's a very easy one. Um, what does a typical weekend look like for you and oh family? Gosh. Okay. Um, I don't know if we have a typical weekend. We, well, I, I guess we do. We spend a lot of time in Horse Tooth Reservoir. So we spend okay. a lot of time just west of Fort Collins. We have a boat up there at the marina. It's a good place and, to spend time. Oh, it's absolutely yeah. wonderful. So our, our summertime is spent on the boat. Nice. Uh, so we got a boat and a slip and we go out there and barbecue and you know, that's our, that's our cabin on the water. Um, we have some property up in the mountains between Walden and Steamboat. So on our off boat weekends, you know, we'll go to the mountains and do some hiking, get away, get out of the heats a little bit and go up there and enjoy nature. So we yeah. have to hike, used to mountain bike quite a bit outside of horse too. So that's a lot of fun. Very cool. Do you have a favorite hike or one that you recommend to, uh, to folks who end up being kind of new to the state? Yeah, honestly, I mean, if, if you're close to Northern Colorado, um, West of Horsetooth is absolutely beautiful. Lori State Park is, is yeah. incredible. It's one of the most beautiful hikes because it's not super challenging unless you want it to be, but it just, you got the mountains on one side and you got the lake on the other side. So it's just incredibly beautiful, very picturesque. It's cool so. that you mentioned that. That was our first hike that we did in Colorado. No was kidding. Lori State right? Park. Yep. Yeah. We arrived to Fort Collins to kind of check out the area in Northern Colorado and heard that was a good spot to go and must have been had a great tourism hike. podcast. I it must have right. been. <laughs> yes. Yes. We were just destined to be uh, talking about it one day. Uh, anything else you'd like for just folks to know if somebody's new to learning about you in the business, uh, they're new to the podcast, perhaps by the time they watch this, we may be on episode 100, Frank, by the yeah, time that gets, but anything maybe. you'd like folks to know about you and what you bring to the table, either as an advisor, or just personally. Yeah. You know, we, we love what we do. We love our clients. You know, we've grown to about 600 clients and I know that's more business than it is personal about Frank, but um, I, I think that statement says that we just love what we do. We love our clients. We throw parties for our clients. We got a limousine that our clients take out. It's a personal limousine all of our asset management has. And when people- No way. Oh yeah. When they get an anniversary or graduation or they, they we started using it for retirement parties. So if people retire, they could take it out. We got a personal driver so they can take the limo out. So we just love our clients. We take really good care of that's them. That's cool. Yeah. We just did a pig roast um, a couple months ago at our house. We got 35 acres in Berthoud. So, you know, we had a pig roast out there with a live band. We do a Christmas party for our clients. So um, we're not going anywhere. We love what we do. We love Colorado. So awesome. Yeah, we're good fit. I want to highlight that last piece. So a relationship with you professionally and mm -hmm. with all of our asset management, it's not the kind of thing where somebody comes in for a meeting or two, and then you have a conversation, you give them a financial plan, and you never talk again. It's an ongoing yeah. thing for many, right. many years, right? Right. Our, our clients become our friends and our family. We did a car show with one of our clients the other week. We're going to do cruise night here in Longmont with one of our clients. Oh, cool. Uh, we've taken clients out to the boat. Uh, we're, I take some of my clients pheasant hunting. I've gone fishing with some of my clients. So, yeah, we become friends. Yeah, nice. it's, it's more than a business. It's, it's a friendship. It's a relationship. Oh, I almost completely forgot. Before we move on to the final piece where we talk more about the podcast yeah. briefly, uh, before we recorded the episode today, folks, Frank was in a plane and right. he was behind the controls. Right. Tell us a little bit about right. that journey. Oh my gosh, yeah. I love to fly. So I started flying before COVID and then obviously some setbacks with the pandemic. You know, we couldn't fly for about a year. So I'm getting back right. into it, but I probably have 250 takeoffs and landings. Um, I got a couple hundred hours behind the yoke. That's great. So I've had a lot of great experiences. Um, I've had some that I'll share with you some other time that were a little challenging, but oh, yeah. I, I do love to fly. So I'm going to dive back in head first and and uh, get back up in the air, get some cross country in. And, uh, you know, I looked at buying, I'm looking at buying a plane right now. So I just lost a hanger in Longmont. Uh, okay. I was going to purchase it last week and it, uh, somebody got to it before I did, but gotcha. uh, we'll keep right. looking. So looking to buy a plane. So we're going to get back out there. And that is very, plane, very cool. Yeah. We will definitely have to do a show from the plane sometime. Oh, absolutely. We, I mean, it might not be able to hear anything, but we'll figure it out. We'll make, <laughs> I'll make the audio work. I always love a challenge of being totally. able to record yeah, in unique we'll environments. It. We're going to make that fun. one happen. All right. So speaking of the show. Let's dive in there uh, as our final piece here. What do you hope people will learn from this podcast? From this podcast? You know, there's a lot of advisors out there. And I think what people need to take away is they need to find an advisor that they like. They need to find an advisor that is in the, I shouldn't say it's been in the area for a long time, but somebody that's stable, hmm. you know, is going to be around for a while to take care of your needs and your family needs. Um, and I think that's, I think that's the first step is finding somebody that you can trust and that you like, that you have, you know, your, your personality synergize very well together. 
Um, and then you want to find somebody that's very knowledgeable in the industry. You know, we spend a lot of time educating ourselves um, with Ed Slot. Uh, a lot of people don't know who Ed Slot is. He's the nation's foremost educator on anything IRAs and taxes. Uh, he's won several awards. He's got six TV shows. He's probably got 12 books that he's written. Um, he's a rock star when it comes to this. So we spend a lot of money just doing this voluntary education. Um, so you want to find somebody that's very, very knowledgeable in all aspects of the, of the industry, not just insurance, not just securities, and not just selling investments, the full time process. Yeah. And that's why we built the time blueprint. All four of those elements, extremely yeah. important. Well, uh, like I said, we're going to talk about those on the next couple of episodes. Uh, last piece of the puzzle here, Frank, would be, you know, I hope that listeners and viewers of the show will be able to figure out for themselves if they're a good fit for you sure. by the education that you provide and some of the things that we go into on the show. But I want to flip that around real quick as an ender today. What does the ideal client look like for you and all of our asset management? Now, ideal client is somebody that wants to share their objectives with us. Uh, that's willing to kind of open up their their finances to us, their goals, their objectives when they want to retire, their hobbies, just everything, you know, lifestyle driven, because that's really what enables us to be a better advisor for them. If we don't understand the clients and understand their dreams and objectives, it's tough for us to really, you know, add the, uh, you know, to, to add the emotional part to the, to the, you know, the fundamental money part of it. So yeah. uh, a client that really wants to work with us um, and have us help them, you know, reach their goals. All right. Very good. Well, in future episodes, what we'll typically do after we have sort of our main topic is we will then have a, a small getting to know you sort of off sure. the wall, non-financial question for Frank. So that's going to be always fun to do. And we're going to end every show with a viewer question or a listener right. question. Since this is episode one, we don't have one of those today, but we do have a getting to know you question for you. All right, so to get to know you, although we've gotten to know you a lot on sure. today's episode, but to get to know you just a little bit more uh, to end things today, Frank, uh, my random question for you today, what was your favorite TV show as a kid? Oh, my gosh. Who did not love the Dukes of Hazard? Dukes of Hazard. All who right. did not love the Dukes of Hazard? The all-time greatest show that as is a kid. That, okay, so I mean, this might be the the slight age difference. I I did, even though I grew up in the South, I didn't grow up with. Is that right? Dukes of Hazzard. Well, yeah. everybody's got to know Daisy Duke, that's for sure. I've got a few best friends that are probably cursing me right now for not having. They should be cursing some They're, fandom. Yeah, they probably got Daisy Duke posters still <laughs> hanging up in their garage. Right? Oh, absolutely, <laughs> yes, General absolutely. Lee. Yes. yes, yeah. I'm surprised you don't have a General Lee parked out front here somewhere. <laughs> yeah, maybe next week. You never know. I do have a Camaro I built. Well, there you go. That's right. So yeah, you're already a few next. steps of the way there. That's Right. Awesome. All right. Very, <laughs> very good. Cool. Uh, I, would, I would have to say The Wonder Years. And uh, we, we just started rewatching The Wonder Years. Is My wife's right? never seen it, so we started yeah. watching it recently. So that was probably mine. I like The Wonder Years. Growing up. <laughs> awesome. What's the best way for somebody to get in touch with you if they've got questions, if they want to go down the line a little bit more of talking about becoming a client or sure. seeing what that's all about? Sure. I would definitely just get on oliverassetmanagement.com. Uh, you can look at all of our, 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 our podcasts that are going to be up there. I've done some radio shows in the past. A lot of great videos on there. You can sign up for a free copy of the book. This was my pandemic project. Nice. So you can come into the office during COVID. So since we didn't have a lot to do, I'll I write spent, a book. I spent that year and wrote a book. So it became nice. an Amazon bestseller out of the gate. Very so cool. Pretty cool. So yeah, they can get on get online and get a, a copy of the book as well if they if they sign up for it. So. The name of the book is Your Time Is Now. The name and of the book is Your Time Is Now. Come in for an appointment. You get a copy of the book and absolutely have a good conversation about your finances and your retirement dreams and goals. That's right. With Frank Oliver and the great team at Oliver Asset Management. We will link to where you can book a session online in the description of today's show. So check that out. And you can also call 720-897-TIME. That's 720-897-8463. Frank, episode one in the books. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thank you. We'll see everybody next time yep. right back here on the Time Blueprint. Sounds good. Advisory services offered through Creative One Wealth, LLC, a registered investment advisor. Creative One Wealth, LLC, and Oliver Asset Management are unaffiliated entities. Licensed insurance professional. Respond and learn how financial products, including life insurance and annuities, can be used in various planning strategies for retirement. The information contained herein is based on our understanding of current tax law. The tax and legislative information may be subject to change and different interpretations. We recommend that you seek professional tax advice for applicability to your personal situation.